So you wanna have some arch trellises, but you don't wanna spend thousands of dollars. And you're willing to do a little bit of it yourself, you know, a DIY project. Well, today I'm gonna to take you through how to build these cattle panel trellis arches. Yes, those things that you see on farms and homesteads, you too can have in your suburbs. So we'll go from the beginning all the way to the end of how to get them, including some of the challenges you may face when you live in the suburbs. It's fall, it's the beginning of the classic vegetable garden season here in Florida. That's right, while most of the country starts in spring, we really start in fall. And I am super psyched because I got cattle panel trellis arches in. Yes, I've been wanting to do this since like for a long time actually. <laughs> I, earlier this year, I went and put in some chicken panel trellises. It's very similar idea, except the materials, well, they're not as heavy duty as what we have behind me. So if you also want to level up your game, let's go through the steps that you need to do to get these in your yard. So step one, we need to map out and make a plan. Yes, I know it's super fun to just run the store, buy stuff and then throw it in your yard. But these things, once you get them in the ground, they are super hard to get out. So we want to put them in a place that we want to have them for years. So first thing you should do is lay out a drawing. I laid out a drawing. Um, you saw it in the last video where it was before you grow your own food where I showed you how I was mapping out a plan of what I was gonna put in my yard. And in that plan, I wanted to create two vegetable tunnels. So those vegetable tunnels, each tunnel has actually three arches to make one tunnel. And that's how I could figure out how many materials I want. So first thing you wanna do, and go ahead, take a piece of paper out right now and start drawing, what is your garden gonna look like? Do you want tunnels? Do you want lots of arches? Do you wanna put them in different patterns? That's what you wanna start with first. Now, as you're sketching out some of your ideas of what your garden may look like, here's some quick tips on how to figure out how big they can be. So a usual cattle panel is about 16 feet wide. And for walking standards, you usually want the sides to be about three feet wide so that the plant can grow a little bit and you can still walk through it, right? So if you're gonna use that kind of classic measurement with a 16 foot long panel, that means that your arch is gonna be about seven to eight feet tall, which is great because that means most of us can walk through it and still access the food that we wanna grow. Cool? Cool. Now you don't have to do these arches as three feet wide, but if you wanna go wider and you still wanna have height to get through them, you're gonna to need to do things like use straw bales to get them up higher on the sides before you put the arches in. But for me, I went straight into the ground and then we went up and over. So I went three feet wide and I knew I'd be in that seven foot range for height, which is perfect. So now that we know it's three feet wide and we're gonna go about seven feet tall, now we gotta figure out, do you want a tunnel? And if you wanna do similar to me, you saw that I have a 12 foot long tunnel, which means I actually have three arches because cattle panels are about four feet wide. They're technically 51 inches, but with some overlap, you're at about four feet. So for me, I'm actually gonna build three arches per tunnel with actually two tunnels so that means I'm actually building six arches total. So do the math really quickly and you can figure out how many arches do you need to make your cattle panel trellis arch or cattle panel trellis tunnels. So now you may be wondering wow you have six arches how much does that cost? Well each arch just to make it some quick and easy math costs about $45 call it 50 if you want to make it nice and even. So I've got six arches, this whole thing costs $300. So now that we have the easy math of about $50 per arch and you know how much you can afford and how many you want to build, let's get into step two. How many supplies do I need? And what are the supplies, right? Right. So the first thing you're going to need per arch is going to be one cattle panel trellis. That's the stuff right here. The next thing you're going to want is a T-post. T-posts are the posts that hold up you can see all these posts behind me. Those are what actually you're gonna secure the cattle panel to. You're gonna need four of these per arch. Now, there are different heights. You'll see when you go to the store, there's four foot, five foot, six foot, all the way up to eight feet. There might be higher ones, I don't remember. But what I would say is, is if you wanna do a three foot wide arch and you want it to be about that seven to eight foot range, you want a seven foot T-post. And now to secure the cattle panels to the T-posts, you're gonna need what are called T-post clips. They come in bags of about 50. And I would tell you, if you're gonna do multiple arches, you need about one bag per three arches. So for me, I only ended up needing two bags. So right now I'm up to six cattle panels. I needed 24 T-posts and I had two bags of clips. 
And if you've never done one of these projects before and work with T-Posts, what you also are gonna wanna add into this is a T-Post driver. That's what you're gonna use to get the T-Posts in the ground. Trust me, it makes your life a lot easier. And they run anywhere from like 30 to $50. The one I have was about $35. And last but not least, there are some special tools for putting on T-Post clips, but you can just use a screwdriver. You'll see in the video as I go along, I'm just using a screwdriver. It's not very difficult. So all total, what I needed, it cost me about $300 for supplies. Oh, and hey, if you need help going and figuring out those supplies and you wanna buy them, go ahead and check out the links below so that you can see what I use to build these cattle panel trellises. So you may be wondering, where did I get all my supplies from? Well, I got them from Tractor Supply Company and they do deliver to some places, but not to my house. So how do I get everything here? Because you may be like me, you live in the suburbs and uh, hello, this is not gonna fit in your four-door sedan. It doesn't fit in my four-door sedan. Yeah, no, trust me, it doesn't. So what I had to do was figure out options. And one of the things I did was I got a U-Haul. I got a U-Haul van. That costs about $100 because I had to go all the way across Tampa Bay to get it and then get all the way back. So I have to add another $100 onto this whole project for a total of $400, which I think I'm gonna get back in all the vegetables throughout the year, but whew, it's still that's cheaper than owning a pickup truck all the time. So the question is, how am I getting that in the van? Yeah, I'm gonna get all these in the van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What have I done? thinking of doing this project let me tell you right now absolute insanity to get that much into the van it would be better to get a whole mini hauler than to get it this way that was hard to go get it in all right back home okay while that may have seemed like it was a good idea that was ridiculously hard oh yeah yeah so just buyers beware it's a great idea, but if you don't live near one of these and you don't have a truck, it ain't easy to do. Now, if I was gonna do this differently, I would not do the van. That was so difficult to get those cattle panels into. I would strongly consider getting the smallest size of like a moving van, the box types. That would have easily fit it. Also, if you have a car, like maybe you might have a, a SUV or a pickup truck where you could put like a hitch on, you can get like an open-ended hitch and actually arch the trellises in them or the panels in them, and that would have worked too. So just consider how you're gonna get them there. You're gonna probably wanna rent something. Don't go buy a new truck, like that's, like you use it once. So take the hit for 50 to $100 to maybe rent something for the day, go pick the stuff up, bring it home, and then return it. was the ingenious way <laughs> figured out to put these in there with the guy's help and then the t-post hold it down i will tell you it was ridiculously loud driving home holy cow are five seven foot t-post heavy do you agree ben yeah i love you. love you so basically you have to unravel them one at a time this is most definitely a two-person job. You cannot do this on your own. Get help. I need help. We all need help. Why are we doing this? And here's the thing, as much as the van was such a pain in the butt, I gotta say, those tractor supply company employees were so helpful. They were so nice. And for being such a pain in the butt to get all that stuff in the van, they worked with me the whole time. Never a complaint. So nice. So honestly, if they ever watch this video, thank you to them. Tools we need. So what I'm gonna be using is some string to do some measurements so I can figure out about how far apart we're gonna do our T-posts. Just gonna use these to cut it. And then of course, gloves to protect the hands. And because we're doing some heavy duty work, I got my stomping boots on. Gotta have those on for big work. All right, I think it's official. Let's become suburban homesteaders. And of course, this project, well, I said it was DIY. It's DIY you and somebody else, because this is definitely a two-person project. Doing it by yourself is 
I mean, I think you could maybe, but you need someone else, so do that. So now you got your buddy and you're ready to build. So let's get step three, let's start building. So what I'm gonna be working on first is taking these stakes and getting them properly measured out using the string that I got and spacing them about three feet apart, approximately maybe a little bit more so that we know where to start putting the T-posts. And then I'll use string so that I can make sure this stays straight all along the way. It'll be fun, all good times, all good things. And then we'll get all the T-posts set and then we're gonna start putting cattle panels in. So for the life of me, we cannot find the tape measure. So we're just gonna improvise. So I know that this chicken panel that we bought before is 36 inches, so three feet. And uh, what is it, three times four? No three times three, three times four. So we're gonna do four lengths of this so I can figure out how long 12 feet is. So that's one. So what I've done here is I've cut that string that's 12 feet long and I've tied it between these two yellow tomato twists, which I'm not using right now. Then I've got this leftover chicken panel, which I know is three feet wide. Can't find our tape measure. And I'm gonna use that to mark out where the other sides are gonna be so we can get all our corners. So we laid out our string and we're ready to go and put the panels in place. So at this point, now what I started to do is we actually built the arches in a couple different ways and you'll see those as we kind of move through this. But the easiest way was is that you, once you got your strings in place, lay the panel down on the ground on the one end, then put the T-posts in, secure the panel to the one side of T-posts, push it into an arch, then put the next set of T-posts in and then secure it to the other side and then build the next arch if you're doing tunnels. Oh my gosh so just like with the victory garden it's raining it's raining so we had to go inside there was too much lightning too much thunder went back inside to pause the project so now that the storm is almost passed out we go don't mind the thunder yeah just a little bit of lightning you know just a little bit of lightning.
So when it comes to the T-post and the clips, here's a couple tips. One is I try to do three clips per T-post. The other thing is, is that you can't always get the cattle panel all the way up against the T-post. In those spots, you're not gonna be able to get the clip on without a lot of work. So what I recommend is look for the spots where the panel comes right up against the T-post in order to put the clip on. Then you can just easily use a screwdriver to go and secure it. And this is how I went and did it. Close up shop for you. So when it came to building the arches, all six of them, it probably took us about three to four hours. Yeah, we had that storm that interrupted us. And of course we were trying to watch our kids at the same time, but I would say about three to four hours. It's not complicated to build them, but it is time consuming. And if you're not able to get supplies delivered and you have to go use something like a truck to go pick it up and rent it and all that, I would plan for a full eight hours for this project. Yay, we got the arches done. Oh my gosh, that took so long. But here's the thing, now I gotta go get the beds all ready. What kind of no-till gardening am I gonna do? But here's the thing, to make sure you don't miss that, go ahead and like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. New videos each week on Friday, and sometimes a bonus on Sunday. And while you wait, go and build your own arches, and check out the links below in the description so that you can get the supplies.